Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about a beginner's guide for your YouTube setup, uh, video setup. So usually um, if you're first starting out creating a YouTube channel, it gets very overwhelming as to... Hello everyone. Oh, I'm turn out. It gets very, gets very overwhelming what kind of equipment to use to begin creating videos. So today I want to kind of go through um, kind of budget gear you can use so that you don't have to break the bank. Because so, I know when I first started off, I first started my channel in 2006, and I can't even remember really what I used so much, but I know that I started off using, I think it was an iPhone 4, I think it was, and um, I think I was just using the light coming in through a window, and then I had a $20 uh, lapel microphone that I got from Radio Shack. And so basically you can start with kind of what you got. And then as you get more funds, you know, make more money from your business, you can upgrade your gear. So um, so today I'm kind of kind of going to go through the um, some of the things that I've used throughout the years and some of the things I'm still using. Actually, I'm still still using my phone. It's uh, iPhone 6S at the moment, but uh, planning on upgrading to uh, a camera, you know, just a, a standalone camera uh, later on. But um, yeah, I want to uh, greet everybody here. My name's Herman Dross from drossdesigns.com. My channel is all about how to grow your audience on YouTube so you can generate traffic leads and sales and autopilot because the beautiful thing about YouTube is that it's a search engine so if you can rank your videos on YouTube and in Google then you know and they remain ranked there then they're gonna be uh, working for you 24 hours a day seven days a week year after year and uh, you know over the years some of my videos I haven't even touched and they're still generating traffic leads and sales. So that's, that's a great thing. And if you can get one video that's bringing, bringing in sales or bringing traffic and then you do the same thing again for another video and another video, you have multiple videos working for you, then um, you, know, you have sort of like automatic evergreen traffic machines. So... Um, yeah, I want to uh, welcome people here. We've got Sha Shi, uh, Jam, Jam, uh, sorry about pronouncing the name, but uh, Sha Shi. We've got Dawson Creek from the Philippines. We've got Jack Foxy, and we've got the Bookworm. We've got uh, Alan, and we've got uh, Muhammad Fasil. So, um, so I'm going to go straight into some of the equipment that I have been using and that I still use. And, uh, you know, at the end, you know, if you've got any uh, questions, pop, pop them in the comments and uh, we'll deal with that. Uh, right now, the equipment that I'm using for this live stream is Ecamm Live, which is, which is really great because you can uh, see the comments, you can uh, put the comments on the screen, you, you also have an automatic... Uh, recording of the video when you're finished you know it's automatically downloaded to your computer and also you can upload it to YouTube if you want to uh, but I'm doing this live on YouTube but using a third-party software Ecamm live to uh, do the live stream so um, so I'm gonna go into screen share now and gonna go through some of the equipment that I use so uh, pr probably a first as I mentioned when I first started off I used the, uh, for cameras, I used the uh, iPhone, I think it was iPhone 4, then I went to 5, and now I'm using the iPhone 6 um, uh, camera. And generally I use the, uh, try to use the back camera because it's uh, 1080p, it's a high definition, but uh, I sometimes use the front facing camera like when, when I'm uh, outside, you know, doing some sort of vlog style uh, shots then um, I'll, I'll use the front facing camera. It's not as good, I think it's 720p, but, um, and I think the, the, new, the new iPhones uh, and uh, even I think Pixel, 
the Pixel camera and also the Samsung, the new cameras, they have actually uh, new phones that actually have better better uh, cameras on them. So I know that the iPhone, you know, now you have, um, I think, a double uh, a dual cameras on them. But um, you can, you know, just kind of use what you got as far as, uh, you know, you don't have to buy really any, ex any expensive equipment. So I'm going to go over to the screen share here now and kind of go through the list of what I use. And maybe I'll uh, have some props here that I'm going to show you as I go along. Uh, well, let's see. So first, uh, here's the video gear guide. So uh, as I mentioned here for the cameras, I uh, got, got the uh, iPhone camera, um, which, you know, just it's a great way to start off and even I've been doing using the the iPhone for years and uh, you know it's as long as you got the right lighting etc then uh, you can do a pretty good job just with the high definition camera on the uh, on the iPhone or uh, Samsung phone or pixel phone uh, whatever but uh, and what I'm using now is the uh, as you can see here it's a Logitech 1080p ProStream webcam. It's a high definition webcam, and um, I'll just show you the box here. Uh, uh, I'm just going to show you the box here. Let's see. I have to go back there. Well, uh, let's see. Oh, I don't want to go there. Bear with me a minute. Okay, so here's the ProStream uh, webcam that I bought. I think I bought it uh, last year, Black Friday. And uh, it says 1080p ProStream webcam, Logitech. I think I got it for like $50 or $60, something like that. On a Black Friday, so it's pretty good. It's you know it kind of uh, you can it kind of got automatic focus on it, and um, you can just plug it into your computer and off you go. Uh, Alan says he has a Logitech nine twenty two, the same, almost great webcam. Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty much the same. Like the uh, C nine twenty was the initial one. And then I think the C9922, I don't know what the number of this one is, but I think it pretty much is the same because it's a 1080p ProStream webcam. So it's a high definition, automatic focus. And uh, the good thing is, you know, you don't have to worry about too many controls. You just go ahead and use it. So, um, so that's with that one. Uh, now I'm going to switch back again to my document. So, um, uh, by the way, actually, I've, I'll be, I've got a, um, uh, the document of all the different products that I'm, that I'm showing off today. Uh, the link is actually in the description, so you can check that out. And, you know, you've got all the Amazon links there if you want to purchase any of those uh, products or upgrade what you have. Now, here's the, um, I've been doing some research on cameras recently, and um, I'm probably going to, you know, upgrade uh, my, from the phone to uh, this this particular camera, which is the Canon uh, M50, um, and here I've shown the Video Creators Kit, and uh, the reason why this is a good camera, it has actually all the features. So I looked at Sony and looked at um, you know different cameras and everything, and uh, I think the good thing about this it's got uh, it's got dual dual um, auto pixel focus so it can focus on your eyes it's got a flip out screen it's got you know produces good um, good quality 1080p uh, vid video you can also have the opportunity uh, option to go to 4k if you wanted to and um, uh, also it um, you know you can put the you can mount the 
um, audio on there. Actually, I looked at this road uh, road video mic go. Um, this this particular mic that's in the kit, and I found out it actually is not as good as like video. Was it video? Uh, road video mic, I think it is, or some other one. So, um, if you're going to get a mic, you might want to look at the different mics that go with that one. But uh, that kind of sits on top of the camera, and um, so I think overall, this is a pretty good camera for. And I think you know some of the a lot of the reviews. If you look on uh, Canon M50 reviews on YouTube, you'll see hundreds of reviews on there. And uh, the guys over at Think Media think that this is the best blogging, vlogging camera and also YouTube camera. So I think it comes in around, uh, you can actually get like $300 off now for, um, I think it's, uh, you get around $600. So it's generally around eight or $900. But right now you can get it, um, well, you can get the whole kit for like $640, $649. And uh, you know it comes with that uh, road. Uh, it comes with the camera. It comes with the uh, the camera and the mic and the S and a disc, etc. So you'll need probably good to get an extra battery. Uh, might be good to get an extra card, but you know in the kit it comes with the card as well. So. Um, Oh, so Harley's saying the Canon's face tracking on the Focus works very well. I use it on the 77, 770D and it's always spot on. Yeah, it's good to know. Um, what uh, what mic are you using, Harley, on, on your camera? Good to know about that because I, I looked at this Rode, um, this Rode mic that comes with a kit and some people saying that it's it kind of picks up some interference from around. So... I'm looking at different mics for that. So, um, okay. So moving on, I'm going to get to your questions a little bit later. Ask, ask, hey, saying, will you answer our questions? Yes, I will. Um, I'm just going to keep going here. So um, you also need a a tripod, um, like the. The Logitech that I'm using at the moment, I've I'm actually I've got it on a small tripod, but this is a larger tripod, and um, so this is a Gorilla tripod. And the good thing is, you know, you can um, you, know, you can put this on a fence, you can put it on your car, you can uh, attach it to the mirror of your car, you can uh, you know it's a ver kind of very versatile because the gor Gorilla. Pod. I think the small one, the original one, is only like twenty dollars, but the larger ones around fifty dollars. And then you might also want to get the um, some kind of uh, holder for your. I mean, if you're using a phone, then um, you want to get a little attachment. Let me show you that attachment. Uh, go back here. Let's see. So we've got this little attachment here. This uh, this kind of screws on. There's a bottom bottom of it here, screws on to the uh, Gorilla Pod, and then you know if you're using the phone, you can just uh, lift up this kind of spring loaded uh, spring loaded thing to uh, wrap your wrap your phone in it. So that's a little attachment you'll need to put on top of the Gorilla Pod. Um, if you have a camera, then you'll need uh, then you know I think it has a uh, a way that you can just screw on the screw on the um, camera to the gorilla pod. Okay, moving right along here. Um, another thing that I bought a long time ago is I used to used to stand up doing my videos, and now I'm sitting down. But uh, a lightweight tripod, you get this for like twenty or thirty dollars. It's kind of a bit plasticky, but I've had it for years, and uh, I don't use it so much now because I'm sitting down. But uh, it's kind of good to have because you can bring it outside, you can fold it up. It comes with a carrying bag, and so it's kind of pretty handy for um, 
Oh, that's not what I want to show. Um, pretty handy for, you know, it has extensions here. You can extend the legs out so it comes to about, I think, about a six foot height. So that's very handy. And uh, I just also want to mention um, if using the phone for um, shooting outside and that sort of thing then the Xylus pistol grip is good for holding steady your um, your phone. So let me show that to you here. Let's see. Let me go back. There's a couple of different things. I've got another prop coming up. So I'm going to switch back. Okay, so here you can see this. This is the Xylus pistol grip. So what you do uh, this is a gripper at the top. Uh, get this right. This is a gripper at the top, and you kind of stick your phone in here, and then, like you first, you get this this grip. It's good for holding your um, good good strong grip, and then this this uh, top thing, you just kind of sit it sit it on top here. It screws straight in. Also has a little uh, ring at the bottom here, so if you're going uh, rock climbing or something, you can just um, attach it to your belt but uh, what you do you just stick your phone in here and uh, see it has a little knob on the back on the back here you just tighten that up and then you just uh, here you go just holding the grip you should try to hold it with two hands and then if you walk like from heel to toe then you can get a pretty smooth footage uh, I've got a, uh, a video on, on how I use that uh, Zylus pistol grip, but you can kind of walk around. And, um, then another thing you can do, if you want to use a microphone, you can use this Video Mic Me. This is, uh, let's see, show this here. So this is uh, called a Video Mic Me, and this plugs straight into your phone. Then you got this, uh, this wind, um, call it, a, what do they call it? Cat or something. Um, anyway, it's a windshield that goes straight on to that video mic me. And then what you do, you just uh, plug it into your phone like so. So uh, this cuts down the noise of um, if you're outside or if you have a lot of noise. And then also you can kind of uh, use it to just, you know, if you're doing a vlogging style and you're talking, talking to the camera you can just walk you know using your pistol grip like so and then you just um, uh, talk into the mic here and it's uh, it's the Rode video mic me so it's very uh, it picks up the sound pretty good and eliminates the wind noise so that's pretty good if you want to um, stabilize stabilize your phone just using the Xylus uh, pistol grip so that'll be in the document in the description below this uh, below this video. And then, if you want to get even more um, more technical, or you want it even steadier, you can use what's called the um, DJ Osmo Two DJ Osmo Two, I think it is. And this, um, I'm gonna switch it on. Stick, then what you what you do you can stick your phone in here let me see okay and so you can stick your phone in there and then um, you can walk, and you can, it's even got a, um, if you get the DJ Osmo, it comes with a um, um, an app that you can download to your phone, and then you can even run with it, you can walk with it, and it's pretty steady. I think you might have seen some of my videos where I was kind of out and about, you know, at the waterfalls, or hiking, or walking, and it's pretty smooth, you know, it has a... It kind of balances pretty well, so you can just walk, and you can. Um, it gives a very smooth motion instead of sort of bouncing up and down. 
so it's pretty handy and then you've got also different controls on the DJ Osmo app that goes onto your phone but uh, if, I can, if I can turn this around Oop. <laughs> there we go that's kind of how it looks then it's got uh, got some different controls here got the uh, battery lights here then you've got uh, you got a zoom control and uh, all different you know you can move it around like so so you do like a panorama then also you can go up and down like so so it's yeah it's pretty handy so I've got, I've got a, it kind of gives you the appearance that you got uh, um, you know, a great cam you're using a great camera you know like the like the the big cameras but it's just your phone and the gimbal the only, only downside of it is that um, that it doesn't really have a, a mic plugin. I mean, it'd be, nice, it'd be nice to have a mic plugin that goes in here. So you got to figure out a way to. Um, uh, I use the uh, Rode SmartLav Plus microphone that plugs into the camera here. So you got a wired uh, wired mic, but uh, it's pretty uh, pretty handy if you want to steady steady your. Um, your footage. Oh yes, Osmo Mobile 2. Yep. Okay, let me switch that off. Oh, and I also mentioned about the uh, Rode Smart SmartLav Plus microphone that can plug into your phone. So this is the uh, this little dinger here. And then you got a little uh, mic on the end. I lost the clip, so I got to make my own clip. And this this kind of plugs on, uh, come goes onto your shirt. And then this one plugs into your phone. Uh, let's see. So this kind of plugs straight into the phone. So if you want to get a very good mic, it's about seventy dollars altogether. Like I think it comes from Australia. But you plug it straight into your phone and then onto your lapel, onto your um, you know shirt or whatever, and uh, it gives really, really high quality sound for just a little mic, little lavalier mic. So that's really handy if you're using your phone, and it's good for outside. And uh, if you got a lot of wind, then you probably want to you know have some put it either inside inside your shirt to kind of cut down the wind. Um, or you know have the microphone really close <clears throat> yeah <laughs> so much is changing hard to stay up to date uh, yeah Johnny Ray saying so much is changing hard to stay up to date yeah it's it's like once you get some gear then it's it's so easy to upgrade. So like, you know, like I've been using the, I think I started using the iPhone 4 and then I went to iPhone 5 and now i got iPhone 6, but now it's time to upgrade again. So um, uh, you can just keep on upgrading. But uh, I think I think my next upgrade is gonna be to the Canon M50. So, uh, cause I run out of storage on the phone and um, uh, at the same time, uh, it's going to be you know high quality video and uh, pictures. Okay, I switch back now to my document and moving right along. So. So here's the. Um, yeah, the pistol grip I was talking about and here's the gimbal um, if you want to learn more about it just go to my document in the description and uh, look at the DJ Osmo Mobile 2 and uh, I kind of bought it over all the other ones I think it was about like $130 when I bought it but I took it to the um, to the Vid Summit conference and then Walked around at the conference and uh, it worked pretty well. So it kept kept the footage very sturdy. Sturdy. Now, as far as lighting goes, what I'm what I'm using as a light right now is the newer ring light, 
and uh, the good thing about it, it has a dimmer switch on it, so you can, uh, which I don't really use because I just, uh, you know, just switch it on. But you can dim the switch. It comes with a bag, and uh, that's pretty much all I'm all I'm using right now for this live stream, and uh, all that I use for my regular videos. So um, it's pretty bright, and probably the only downside is that. You might see the um, you might see the uh, the the ring you know the ring actually in the in my eyes so that that sometimes happens but most people don't notice it but it's uh, instead of having a whole bunch of soft boxes I just got one ring light that's that's uh, very bright and um, just uh, it's probably right now it's about uh, about three feet away from three or four feet away from where I'm sitting but it works really well alternatively and this is what I did when I first uh, first started making videos I just bought the cowboy lighting kit and uh, so it's got this big uh, it's got three soft boxes and then it's got these um, got these lights in here oh let me uh, let me show you that show you one of them. I'm going to go back to my um, so it's a little bit big but here it is whoa so this is the uh, soft box you have to go back a bit further and if I take the cover off then what you have you got these uh, these lights well it's a bit dark you got these lights inside here oh. so I don't know what's what what uh, size these are but they're pretty bright lights and um, let me screw it back in there Okay, it's getting pretty dark. Maybe that didn't work out too well. <coughs> but here, yeah, those uh, three three soft boxes. Then, um, so when I was using my uh, phone in my studio, I have another uh, in the basement. There, I got a studio, and uh, I used uh, I used the phone uh, on the tripod, which I showed earlier. Then I had uh, like a three-point lighting system, so I had a light that was like, uh, if I sh if I had the camera in front of me, then I had a light just to the left of the camera, and then I'd have um, two soft boxes that were behind me that were lighting up the background, and then I had like a muslin sheet, you know, for a background at that stage. But you can have any any kind of background, but. Uh, the whole idea was that I think the three-point lighting system is uh, actually works very well. So those three soft boxes, um, you know, make light you up pretty well. Okay, Ellen's saying somebody told me it's better to use LED lamps because the one you show can burn the diffuser on the long run well I've had it for about I've had the soft boxes for about I don't know maybe eight or ten years and I haven't had any trouble actually the lamps haven't burnt out uh, it hasn't uh, caused the fuse to burn out they do get a little bit hot though like if you're very close to them it can be a little bit hot but but they're pretty cheap. I think overall I paid my maybe $150 for it for the three um, three um, three lights, and um, yeah, had no problem with it. So, but I think maybe I think the LED lamps could be more expensive. Um, but I know there's so many different so many different lighting systems out there. But if you want to get something inexpensive, I think the Cowboy Lighting Studio is. Uh, sufficient because uh, I haven't broken any bulbs 
I've knocked over some some of those uh, knocked over some of the stands and the and the, the the whole box fell on the floor but nothing broke so even though it's kind of cheap but it's good enough for uh, your studio oh now I'm saying three lamps is best yep <laughs> so Alan's saying if you're married no problem with the ring light <laughs> yeah that's right okay ah uh, Harley saying um, are you using everything are you using your phone for everything at the moment um, well I have been using well, right now I'm using the um, the ProStream webcam and so I've been using that for regular videos as well so uh, when I'm outside and doing b-roll footage or filming outside I'll just take the cat take the um, take the uh, the phone with me uh, it's very handy it's always with me uh, I guess that's why the reason why I, did, I wasn't thinking of upgrading to a real camera because it's so easy just you know you take it with you sometimes uh, you don't want to take bulky bulky camera gear with you but um, but I think you know if you want to get a even a better picture, a high quality picture, uh, you know, upgrading to a, a a dedicated camera is probably the way to go. Okay, so going back to my document here again, let's see. So we covered the uh, the lighting, uh, microphones. We talked about the Rode SmartLeft Plus microphone. I showed you that, but here is the. This one plugs directly into your into your phone, so uh, that is really good. Um, you know, even though it doesn't look much, but it um, it works really well. Gives really good sound. It's about seventy nine dollars. Comes from Australia, and then I think if you register with them, they give you like two or three years guarantee uh, on that on that microphone, which is really great. Uh, the one, uh, not a cheaper one, which is about fifteen eighty eight, is and some people recommend this is the Boya Lavalier microphone. I haven't tried it because I, I was using the um, what the heck was that Audio Technica Lavalier microphone, which is about twenty dollars from MicroShack. So I was using that one for for several years until I realized that the sound could be better and switched to the Rode SmartLav Plus microphone. <coughs> but this is a good alternative and I showed you also this uh, Rode VideoMic Me this plugs straight into your um, str plug straight into your into your phone I, I, I showed you that earlier but um, you know, I'll show it to you again So here it is. This is a video mic me. Um, if you have an iPhone 7, 8, or beyond, they have another video mic. I think it's called Video Mic L or something like that, which is a different connection to this one, but also plugs straight into your phone. And then it also comes with this uh, this windscreen, which you just put on here, and it comes in very handy to eliminate the wind noise. So that's that's another option. Uh, for that and then for my um, for the desktop uh, I use let's see if I can this is the snowball snowball microphone blue snowball go on focus focus blue snowball microphone <laughs> turned around here it is here So that's what I'm using at the moment, and um, I think it's around. I can't remember the price because I bought it several years ago. But I think uh, you're gonna have to have to look look that up. But I think it's probably around seventy dollars, something like that. 
but there's a there's actually a better one. The blue uh, was it the blue Yeti microphone, another desktop microphone. I think that's that's even better. But you're paying like 150 dollars for it. So if I were to upgrade from a desktop microphone, then I would um, get the blue Yeti. Okay, so um, Grizz270 says, have you addressed what mic is best for a cell phone video? I do outside sawmill. Um, yeah, I would say get the, um, this one here is the Rode SmartLav Plus microphone. So it's got, I've lost the um, little uh, thing that's on top, this little wind uh screen on top and I've lost a clip but has a, I made my own clip and this kind of plugs directly into the phone so like so and then you're good to go um, to cut out the noise I would say uh, you know instead of putting it right right on your shirt here then you know stick it inside your shirt you know you can get a little tape and then tape it on the inside of your shirt and then that cuts down the wind noise and any kind of ex external noise. So it still still seems to work well if you've got it taped on the inside of your shirt. So that's my recommendation. Otherwise, um, you know, just using the Video Mic Me is also another good alternative. But for sawmill, it sounds very noisy, so I would go with a Rode SmartLav Plus microphone. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to um, Okay, so Harley said you can get generic lavalier windscreens on Amazon for a couple of bucks or ten dollars a pack. Yeah, thanks uh, Harley for that Oh, and the Wombat says um I take the Tackstar SGC 598 shotgun mic interview microphone. It works good for the money. How much is that, uh, Wombat? Interview microphone. Yeah, I think for... Uh, for now, if you're doing interviews, you could use the... Um, you could use this one for interviews. I've done that uh, for interviews. I think I had one of those. I did an interview outside when a guy was fishing. Um, or I think the Rode SmartLav, they also have, um, you can get two microphones like this and then they have like a switcher in between and so uh, each person can wear the, <coughs> wear the SmartLav Plus microphone. Say if I was interviewing you know, one of you, you'd wear one of these, I'd wear one of these and then you can easily switch between them. So that's, that's another idea. But uh, that's a good one from Wombat uh, using the shotgun mic interview microphone. $30. Okay, that's pretty good for an interview microphone. Is that battery powered, uh, Wombat? Okay, I'm going to switch back to my document here. Um, See what I didn't cover. So I got the snowball microphone. Oh, this is something that uh, if you're using the phone, it's pretty handy. It's the Satishi Remote. And uh, I haven't used this that much, but you know, if you're filming by yourself, say you have your iPhone on a tripod, um, or if you you know you don't want to stop and start the uh, your phone camera then the Satashi remote's good because you can uh, start and stop the video um, in front of your camera. You don't have to start, you don't have to go to the camera, go to the phone and start and stop it. So 
Um, so it's kind of handy. Um, you can use it for um, for presentations also. Oh, one tri one double A battery. That's pretty cool. And I just want to go quickly through some of the software that I use. I, for my videos for editing, I use the uh, ScreenFlow. Um, so this is, uh, I use ScreenFlow 7 at the moment, but it's now ScreenFlow 8 that I use for editing. It's about 100 bucks, and it's just for the Mac, but it uh, makes it very easy, easy to learn and easy to edit your videos. But others, there's some, uh, when I first started off, I used iMovie, which is free for the Mac, and it's also free for your phone. You can edit on your phone. And other free versions are Shotcut, OpenShot, Filmora, Kinemaster, Lightworks, DaVinci Resolve, and HitFilm Express. I think these are all pretty much free. They're free versions. And in my document, I've got the best video editing software for beginners, top seven tools, screen re screen recording software tools uh, like Screencast-O-Matic, um, and the best YouTube tools to grow your channel in 2018, 2019. Now, if you want to do graphics, free graphics software, you can use something like uh, Canva. Uh, Canva I use to do all my thumbnails. Uh, PicMonkey is another one, GIMP, and then I use Pixelmator, which is just for the Mac to, um, you know, if you want to remove the background and put a, uh, a sort of a white outline around yourself. Then for backing up my video files, uh, what do you guys use for backing up your files? I, I just use the um, the uh, four gigabyte, ex uh, for, no, I think it's terabyte. It's a terabyte, that's not gigabyte. Four terabyte, I have to change that. Four terabyte external drive. So all my, I highly recommend to back up your, um, your video files. So I just use the uh, four gigabyte. I think I have a one, one terabyte external drive and a four terabyte external drive. And that one's almost full, so I'll probably get another four terabyte external drive. And the good thing about the with the Mac, you can use Time Machine on it, so it automatically backs up your whole computer uh, every hour if you want. But there are other backups. If you want to back up your computer, you've got the cloud backups like Carbonite, Backblaze, Mosey, Google Drive, iDrive, Dropbox, and uh, IXE Hubic is another one. If they give you, um, I think, let me put that in there. Hubic, give, Hubic com gives you like 25 terabytes of free storage. So if you want an online backup, then uh, that's, you know, they give you like, uh, yeah, I think 20, 25 terabytes. You can also use Amazon Drive, Amazon S3, and then some of the apps that you can use. You got the YouTube app, which you can install for free, the YouTube Studio app, which is free. And then if you want to take better, um, better photos on your phone, for instance, I would highly recommend installing the Filmic Pro app, which allows you to change the uh, change the lighting a bit and to uh, wa uh, change the white balance so you can get a much better uh, much better control over your pictures and over your video oh that's good to know so Dawson said I'm using the HitFilm Express find it hard to use yeah I haven't tried HitFilm Express but um, that's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Wombat's asking, um, 
Would you recommend getting a graphics card to help with video rendering? I have heard conflicting things. So, um, I would say definitely get a good graphics card. I don't know what you're using. Let me check what I use on this Mac here. Uh, on my Mac, which is 27 inch. Uh, let's see. I'm using an AMD Radeon R9 M390. 2048 megabytes so um, I definitely get if you get I know graphics cards are not cheap so I definitely get the best you could afford and I know um, also memory is a big thing for your computer so when I was trying to I think I moved from um, a PC to the Mac and then I got the iMac and then I found that the iMac uh, it has a couple of slots in the back where you can upgrade from 32, uh, 32 meg, uh, 32 gigabytes, I think, to 64 gigabytes. So if you can get get a lot of memory for your computer, that helps with the rendering. Oh, and as far as the backdrop goes. Um, I'm using the these are these are wall hangings you can get from uh, dress dress dresslily.com. I've got a link in my uh, document that's in the description. But here here you can get and he, I think they even have a sale these days. But these are all backdrops. Like here's kind of a brick backdrop. Uh, Does they have mine here? Like this one here. This is the one I think I'm using here. This. This wall hanging so it's like lit up except I've got it upside down but um, this one I'm using but they got you know tons of backdrops and only like 20 bucks $18 so you get like 70% off this one here so you want kind of a realistic backdrop so um, so that's that's just some idea of different backdrops But uh, let me show. Yes, so, so these are just yeah different different ones you can use, and these are these are just a wall hanging. It's about eight foot by six foot, but it works pretty well. So as you can see, I sh just showed you that uh, video backdrop on the on that website. And this is the brick backdrop, so it looks like it's. I don't only have the ring light in front of me, but it looks like there's uh, lights in the background as well. But there's no lights in the background, so it's kind of built into the wall hanging. So uh, that's you know I think it cost like twenty five thirty dollars when I bought it. So I think it works pretty well. What do you think? But you can get all kinds of backdrops. But I thought you know the brick wall kind of suits that sort of natural look, you know, with the plants and everything. All right, Wombat saying. So I got a couple coming from Dress Lily. Should be here soon. All right, good to see somebody else using it. Uh, Grizzes has good uh, a good suggestion here. Um. I have a Dell Inspiron laptop, cleaned everything off it, put all the videos on my Seagate 2, 2 terabyte Seagate, and my computer is not near as clogged as it might be. So I find that um, even I only have one terabyte on my uh, iMac, and uh, I continually, when I finished a video, finished uploading a video to YouTube, then I'll transfer that that video, you know, all the video files to the four terabyte hard drive, so it keeps my computer clean, you know, because uh, a few times I've had I just forgot about that and kept on piling up the video files on my desktop, and then I found out I had like two gigabytes or ten gigabytes left on my hard drive, and then I found my computer was really straining to uh, to edit the video so it took a long time uh, to render or not not only to render but to actually edit the videos so I highly recommend 
um, you know, keeping your, um, keeping the, uh, have a high memory on your computer as well as, um, uh, also, uh, keeping, keeping the, uh, storage, you know, keeping the storage clear. Okay, going back to document again. Let's see what I missed. Okay, so I mentioned the live stream gear that I'm using. I'm using the Ecamm Live software, and I'm using the, um, I don't know if it's a C922, but it's the uh, 1080p Pro Stream webcam, which I, I guess it's almost the same thing. <coughs> then I'm using the Snowball mic, using the Gorilla tripod, using my um, iMac computer. I'm using the tapestry wall hanging and the ring light. Then I've got a couple of videos on my on my channel, which you, which is in the document. Uh, what Mac should I buy for video editing? So I go through that. Then Mac or PC, which one should I buy? I kind of came to the conclusion it's, you know, you can get a very good PC um, probably for a lot less money than a Mac. But, you know, I like the Mac because um, I haven't had any viruses since I've had a Mac for several years. When I had a PC, I was getting viruses and, uh, you know, even though I had uh, virus software. And it, it just works. You know, the PC would keep on um, kind of you know, breaking down. But since I had the Mac, I haven't had any problems. So some important things to keep in mind is to, I think, you know, if you're first starting off with your YouTube setup, you know, talking about beginner's YouTube setup, then I would say just, just use what you have, you know, and then you upgrade as you gain more experience and generate more revenue. And then if you've got a uh, dedicated place like your office or a basement, then you can just set up your camera, set up your lights, and you never have to uh, move the lights or move the camera you know, unless you take it out with you. But um, you, know, you can have the lights, the tri tripod, the backdrop, everything's like a dedicated space for filming your video. So then it kind of it kind of reduces the friction when it comes to film, filming your video. Because if you have to set up the lights, set up the tripod, set up the camera, adjust the lighting, adjust your camera, then, you know, that kind of all takes up energy, which you could use for filming one, two, or three videos. So the less friction you have, then the easier it is to batch film your videos. And I think the most important thing is not not really all the gear, though you do need good gear, is the content. You've got to have great content, even though you know, your equipment might not be totally up to scratch, but if you have great content, people are not going to really care as long as you have you know, really good sound and decent lighting. But you know, you've got to create that engaging content that your audience wants to watch. Then use your video gear to reinforce your message and make it easier for your uh, to consume your content. Okay, I'm going to go through, uh, have a look quick through all the questions, quick look through all the questions here. Uh, call me ads. Let's got a question here. My YouTube channel banner shows as a square. I try to change it and doesn't let me place it how I want, and it's the right size. Um, I don't know why that is. Um, I can't remember the dimensions for the channel banner, but if you look on my um, if you look on my channel uh, for a video on how to customize your channel banner or how to change your channel banner then you be able to be able to see how I did it there but let me uh, make a note of that so I can put that in the after this after this live streams finished and then I'll put that into the description so uh, channel banner 
because I've got a video on how to create a channel banner using Canva and then using the right dimensions and it comes out pretty well. Okay, just looking through the questions here. Oh, John has a good uh, tip here. You can use multiple profiles on your computer. Only way, the way, only use what you need for video editing. So, yeah, that's a good idea too. Thanks, John. Oh, okay. Okay, Alan says... Um, Get a Canon Rebel SL2 instead of M50, you get pretty good videos and dollars to buy better lenses. Oh, that's a good tip. Um, what's what's better about the SL2 than the M50? I think I looked at the SL2, and I think uh, I guess I guess it's up to uh, what your choice is. But what would like to know from you, Alan, uh, what you like best about? I mean, might you might save some money and get more lenses, but um, uh, I know when Think Media did a review on the ML M50 and SL2, they said the M50 was had more features. So I don't know if that's true. Okay, just looking through the questions here. If you've got any other questions, then uh, put them in the chat. Okay, Beauty Conscious says, I'm confused about sound recording. What should we do to get the best sound result? when shooting with a mobile phone. Well, I think I mentioned that before, but may I just mention again, I think the Rode SmartLav Plus microphone is, uh, is really good because it uh, plugs, directly, plugs directly into your phone and then you can you know, have it on your shirt or on your dress and it gives very good sound. Alternatively, you can use this one, the VideoMic Me, which plugs you know directly into your phone. Uh, let's see, where is it? Like so. So I've take that off. So you could uh, you know if you're if you wanted to uh, get sound from directly in front of you, or you could turn it around and then you could speak directly in the microphone too. So I think the good thing I like about this is that you just plug it straight into your phone and you're, you're ready to go instead of having wires or uh, other things. So ease of use is crucial, but gives gives pretty good sound too. So that's what I recommend. Oh, okay, uh, Grizz said, um, cell phones usually on a stand while I'm running the sawmill. Is there a Bluetooth mic? Uh, maybe if any of you in the chat can answer that, I'm not too sure about the Bluetooth mic. So I uh, can't help you there, but um, probably what you could use is a uh, battery powered uh, battery powered microphone I think they're much much more expensive but that means you can carry the battery powered microphone on you and then you can walk around you know 30 feet 40 feet so I would just uh, google um, uh, you know microphone what do they call it mobile microphones or uh, external microphones
Okay, just going through some of the other questions here. Okay, as I said, uh, is it bad asking subscribers for subscribers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you go into, uh, recently they did a purge of subscribers from many channels. I, I lost, I, I probably lost a few hundred. But sub for sub is definitely a no-no because um, it means, you know, say, say for instance, somebody says to you, I'll, I've, I've, subs I've subscribed to your channel from 10 of my channels, so please subscribe to my channel. Uh, so those 10 channels, obviously, they're not very active and they're not going to be continually uh, watching your videos, you know, each, each video you bring out. So they're, they're not very engaged. So, and also it's against the um, rules of YouTube and could result in your channel being terminated. So uh, definitely don't do uh, our sub for sub. Oh, and John has said, uh, prop panorama video and stills required just in the camera lenses to determine the lens point. Yeah, that's true. So, um, yeah, when you're doing panorama, and uh, I think that's what I, what I like about the, just using my phone, there's not too many controls in it, and you can do things very quickly. But uh, um, I think if you have a camera that's uh, automatic, then, of course, it's going to be easier to just make those adjustments. JJ is saying, can I use one channel for many topics? Yes, you can. But I would definitely uh, think about, you say if you're doing one on cats and one on dogs, then you might want to consider a separate channel. But um, alternatively, put your different topics into different playlists and uh, find a way that you can... Um, uh, you know, promote those particular playlists. But if it's very, if it's a very different topic, then I highly recommend creating a different channel because you know, if you're, say, if I say like my tutorials are all about YouTube, and I suddenly started talking about cats because uh, they have a lot of cats, then I'm going to lose all my subscribers and nobody's going to watch my videos. So that's because there's like two completely different topics. And suddenly, you know, you're starting to show a topic that people uh, are not used to. So, in that case, I would go for a different channel. Okay, um, <laughs> what Canon, Dawson's asking, what camera is better than the Canon or the Sony? Uh, that's a very difficult question. I, I, I was talking to a friend of mine a couple of nights ago because I was looking at the cameras and he's been doing cameras for like 40 years and he has Canons and Sony and everything but he is kind of uh, leaning towards Sony because uh, it looks like now... Um, the DSR, DLSR is, uh, and is moving towards mirrorless. So mirrorless is like the new new type of camera that has less moving parts, is less bulky, it's lighter to carry, and still still br still brings the best pictures, uh, good pictures, just like any DSR, DSLR. So it looks like Sony is leading the way for mirrorless cameras, but Canon is kind of right behind and probably Panasonic and Fuji and Nikon, uh, you know, uh, around the same time. But I think the Canon M50 is a good mirrorless camera, but Sony seems to be leading the way for mirrorless cameras. But uh, I looked at, I think it was a Sony A6500, which is over $1,000, I think it is, but it didn't have a, a place for an external mic. So that was sort of the the downside of the of the Sony A, A63 or A6500. 
So, um, so I think I think any of those Canon or Sony is probably two of the best brands. And I agree with Harley that uh, it depends on requirements, personal preferences. Oh, and Harley saying, "Well, wow, you've got a lot of cameras there." Saying that Fuji is the great option thrown into the mix. Hate Sony's user interface. Fuji is the best I've seen. Oh, I haven't checked out Fuji, but yeah, that's uh, good to know. I think overall that uh, you know, if you this when I when I was thinking about this uh, live stream, I was thinking about you know people that are just starting up or want to upgrade their YouTube studio or their gear. You know, just like I'm doing, I've been using the phone for years and tried different backdrops and different microphones. And, uh, you know, I think if you want to be a professional YouTuber, then you definitely need to upgrade as you have the the money to buy more gear. So, um, so definitely, you know, looking for a better camera, um, better lighting but you know these days you can get things pretty cheap you know you can get the a good camera for under a thousand dollars you can uh you know you can use your phone which you know the latest phones have extremely good um video and pictures uh but you know like the latest iphone i think is around a thousand dollars so you can get a pretty good camera for that and you can get a larger sensor uh for, through the camera but you know your backdrops, uh, your lighting, you can get pretty cheaply. A microphone, you can get pretty cheaply. So overall, there's no excuse to start creating videos. But as I, as I said before, the main the main um, the main thing about creating videos is you is you got to have good content, got to have good delivery, and uh, try to answer the uh, solve the problems that people have you know that are in your audience <clears throat> okay Alan saying mirrorless Sony is not good on battery but Sony a7 are great if we are taking picture wise okay thanks for that Alan so let's put that up there um, Sony A7, yeah, it looks like A7, I guess, is the the latest from Sony, and it looks like the pictures are great, and uh, I guess, is the video great too on that one? Uh, I guess you're paying like a couple of thousand dollars for that one. So if you've got any more questions, put them in the chat. Um, oh, man, the new one is... Uh, 2500 Sony okay well yeah that's uh, I guess if you're uh, you know doing a lot of uh, like cinematic type videos then that's you know probably a way to go uh, John is asking is it better to record audio and video separately and sync in post-production or not um, I think for me I don't do that uh, but I know that some people, like, say if you have a Sony camera and it doesn't have a external mic, then the best way to go would be to uh, record the audio separately, then sync it into your software. And I, I think Adobe Premiere, I don't know if any of you have Adobe Premiere, but um, I think it does it automatically for you, or it's very easy to do. Um, I know I could do that also in ScreenFlow, but for me... I want to get you know the editing done as fast as possible and so the less I have to bring different piece, bits and pieces together then the less friction there is and it's easier to produce the videos so <clears throat> um, but uh, I've seen you know, if I've, I've even seen that people have used their phone to record the audio and then synced it up with the video uh, later on so that that's an idea too Hey, I want to thank everybody for attending this live stream today and for all your suggestions and your questions. I think it was great to 
uh, get other people's feedback on the different microphones and cameras that they're using. And um, I think I'll probably do a bit more research before I get my uh, upgrade to the camera, but uh, I think I'll definitely look at the SL2 again, maybe look at Fuji, but it looks like the M50 is a great choice if you um, want to upgrade from your phone uh, or just get a better phone uh, because it de definitely the new phones have great, uh, great video capabilities and picture capabilities. So, um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for being here. I uh, hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.